All right, what's up, guys? Uh, doing the Ford today. Uh, I'm just gonna whip out my uh, Coda setup. See how that works. I was actually thinking about maybe doing my Suzuka setup because they're similar tracks. Well, not similar. Both kind of have a <clears throat> flow to them, but I just, I, I honestly can't remember how good that setup was, so I'm just going to go with the code one. Because, uh, code has got a lot of corners and it's got a lot of corners. That's my, uh, expert evaluation. So I've switched from the, uh, Formula One carbon rim. Now I got the Porsche 918 wheel. It's a little more proper for this car. <laughs> Excuse me. First thing is I gotta remember I'm not driving the McLaren. Just take it real easy these first couple of laps. These are the first laps I've done with this car on this track. I already can tell that section's going to be crazy. And with this fan attack wheel, catching slides like that really isn't hard at all. Yeah, pretty dang good rotation right there. So one thing this car does have <clears throat> is just good off-throttle rotation. It's had that since day one. It's those little hairpins, but that's probably the main reason that it's kind of a handful at times too, because that rear end does want to rotate so much. car really doesn't take those curbs as well as a McLaren did. So we all just make this so much fun to just not worry about sliding, I guess you could say, and just kind of floor it. And power your way out of there. Not that that's a best driving technique, but sometimes it's kind of fun. Not best for speed. It's best for fun.
a little bit of push. Uh, middle to exit of that last corner. That car really doesn't feel that bad. Can't remember what kind of time I ran the McLaren, but I know it was pretty close to this. Unless I'm off by a second. <laughs> An early shift there, I think that's going to make more sense to do that. Instead of staying in second gear and then shifting after you get on the throttle. <laughs> Alright, I tried to get a little too cute there. I tried to drift. Still not possible. Maybe with the $2,000 wheel. Alright. So the car feels pretty doggone good. Again, another uh, set I could just put on the forums. That's not very educational. Trying to think what it's to do better. I mean, the most obvious thing is the ride height, but. Not a big fan of getting the car higher because it usually just makes it harder to drive. What could I do? I guess I could just do overall spring rate changes. Maybe. Oh, yeah. All kinds of room. <clears throat> okay. So. First thing, look at the ride heights, 60.2, 78.1. And then we'll just, uh, if I can. Uh, oh, got one, less, one last click left in there. I'm just wondering if I should keep this. Because what I was going to do, I was going to go up uh, one click here and then two clicks here. Now I'm thinking just leave. Because I really don't want to make the front end stiffer. I don't see that helping me. So I'll keep that the same. I'm going to increase this one click. 
Watch the ride height go up. There you go. So we got to adjust for that. Okay, so we got a little bit of stiffer spring in the back now. Uh, that should <coughs> just promote more all over uh, oversteer. Because if anything, the car is a little bit on the pushy side getting into the corner. I just got to check something on my... Uh... Shoot. Checking something on my wheel real quick because... I'm going to try a different drift setting because the wheel's oscillating a little bit too much on a... Ah, dang it. I got to back out and come back real quick. Sorry, guys. What happens if you... Because uh, on the Fanatec wheels, there's like five different global settings. So, if you change from one global setting to another uh, global setting while you're still in the server, it'll... uh. The wheel will just go weird on you. <clears throat> it doesn't have like the same degrees of rotation anymore. So right now I'm just getting back in that server. Second, gotta get the the host or it's a test server, so I gotta. It's another thing that annoys me about, or just something that annoys me about iRacing is the uh, testing thing. It doesn't save your last test session settings for weather so you always have to adjust it you know it's just in there like two seconds ago. i mean it saves your car it saves the track you're at but it doesn't save the weather so hopefully they'll fix that one day all right so back make sure that actually did yep still there all right problem is i just really don't like I really do like that drift setting for, but I guess uh, I'm going to go to drift setting <laughs> 3. That just creates a little more dampening in the wheel, so hopefully I won't oscillate as much on the straightaways now. Actually, I just don't like the way the wheel feels with that setting. Just changing it back to four real quick. There we go. Alright, so now I'm just trying to see if the car just has it pretty much with that more rear spring. It's going to have uh, more oversteer everywhere. It's going to cause weight to transfer quicker from uh, the rear to the front. It's going to cause weight to uh, transfer quicker from the left to the right, especially in the rear end. <clears throat> that felt better, but. Just the first lap, and you can't ever uh, get too excited about the first lap. Give it a couple laps, and then you can see what you really got. I like to let it float out there a little bit like that, and then it comes back, and just get on the gas. So these new wheels, little sections like that where you come up over the crest, they, just, they have so much more life in them now because you can just feel the wheel getting lighter as you come over the crest and the rear end one has started to come out on you. It's a pretty cool sensation. I never really remember having fun going up over crests like that. Now it's an experience. the brake right in between the one and the two maybe even closer to the uh, one with the Ford than I did with the McLaren not exactly sure yet I 
can go. Well, you can go in there a little fast because you can let that. <coughs> I actually didn't let it drift out as much as I probably should have, but go in there a little fast and then you just let it naturally drift out and then come back in and hit your second apex. I had to <coughs> carried a little bit too much speed through there, I'm not sure. get a late apex gives you the best line over that crest come in here and then just you know let it float out slowly downshift it's probably one of the trickier sections right there you're pretty much in a constant trail break early shift there that nah, car's definitely got better rotation through that corner now a little fast <laughs> I love this wheel guys I know that doesn't look like much uh, when you're just watching that video, like that little slide going through turn one, but it's just so much more control now. Just really know what the car is doing. And if you guys didn't watch my other video, my wheel before this was just a CSR regular, so this wheel is just, I don't know, feels like it's ten times more uh, useful my CSR was. CSR is my backup now, but I hope I never have to use it. Ooh. Big curb. Another thing, you hit curbs like that and it'll rip the wheel out of your hands. <laughs> You're not ready. I hit a pyramid at Coda and damn near sprang my thumb. You gotta watch out. Mm. Yeah, let's see, just let it float out like that. Comes back in. Gives you a better line, but the car's still pushing a little bit too much there on exit. Some of that does have to do with the tracks falling away from you. So on the track, you know, you're going down a hill, the car has a tendency to push. Same thing I did last lap. It's way too fast. Starting to drive a little sloppy. Is that not a 1X? <laughs> Sometimes I just don't know about you, I racing. And 
actually start shifting a little bit earlier there into third. It'll help with stability over that crest. And I won't hit the rev limiter when I come up over that crest and get a little uh, wheel spin. All right, a little bit better lap now it's focusing. Still could have got some more out of it. Oh. There definitely is a... Uh, as you can see right there, more rotation there. So we'll keep that. I like it. But I want to kind of help that uh, lack of rotation going through this part of the corner right here. Tire pressures look nice and even across the middle on the inside. So, so basically I want more rotation in the front. And uh, I was thinking about doing high speed rebound dampening, bringing that down, but <clears throat> I need to work on corner exit, and everything's kind of set and done. I just don't know how much uh, rebound dampening will help me. Uh, plus, I was looking at the wrong one. I don't know how much rebound dampening will help me on corner exit. I'm just going to bring the uh, front roll bar down all the way to full soft. Let's see how that works. <clears throat> So at the front roll bar, it just connects your uh, anti-roll bar, I should say. <laughs> connects the uh, left wheel to the right wheel. The stiffer you make it, the more those two are connected. Uh, so and the softer you make it, the less those two are connected. So if you hit a bump with the uh, right wheel, the left wheel is going to feel it less when you have a uh, soft anti-roll bar. When you got a stiff anti-roll bar, you hit a bump with one tire the other tire is really gonna feel it it's uh, in theory uh, if the tracks a smoother track you want a stiffer roll bar and then if it's a more bumpy track you want a softer roll bar just so the bumps don't affect either so the card can just act uh, more independently uh, each wheel but the benefits of having a stiffer front roll bar is say you're going into a left-hander, um, the weight's going to want to shift to the right wheel, right? Well, if you stiffen up that front roll bar, it's when that weight shifts to the right, it's also going to want to push back on that tire to the left. So it does, to a certain extent, optimize your grip at the front. But that takes a lot of trial to error to figure out if you have too much uh, anti-roll bar or not enough. And the reason I made this adjustment change is because, I mean, overall oversteer I don't think would hurt me at this point. And roll bar kind of affects, anti-roll bar kind of affects the uh, every part of the corner. So, see how that works out for me. Just get a little bit more body roll on the front end. Uh, this front end does feel pretty stiff. So you get a little bit more body roll hopefully and get some more uh, grip going to that outside tire which will promote a better front end grip. So that's what I'm going for. Should also make these bumps a little bit more uh, not really, but <laughs> in theory it should make those a little bit easier to drive over.
much match my best lap, but I think that was only on my first flying lap. Oh yeah, that's a lot better right there. That was exactly what I wanted. I just realized my McLaren times aren't exactly comparable to the Ford because I was racing that McLaren with a full, or practicing that McLaren with a full tank. So I think I'm running pretty much the same exact time, but again, that McLaren had a lot more fuel in it. It's one thing, it's not easy to get off tracks here. You actually got to go off track. So I'm pretty much dragging the brake all the way until I get to that apex. Watch out now. Man, imagine doing that in a race and taking somebody out. I think that ended their day. Alright, so I'm gonna keep the roll bar change. Save it. So it's, uh, I'm in experimenting mode now. <clears throat> Actually, I think what I can do now is because this rear end <coughs> really isn't snapping around on me, I can start to uh, increase this uh, preload now. Um, so the lower you have the differential preload, there's some pretty cool videos on YouTube that explain differentials pretty well. Uh, nice and simple. If you want to Google that, that'll help you out. But 
basically uh, think about the more I increase this number, the more the right and left rear tires work as one. So if you had this all the way jacked up, think about it almost as a solid rear axle where uh, both tires or wheels are have the same amount of rotation. It's not completely locked in this situation, but just for explaining it, think of it that way. So both tires are now always constantly spinning at the same rate. So when you go into corners, what's going to happen is the outside tire is going to want to go faster than the inside tire. So it's going to cause that inside tire to drag a little bit and they'll have a little bit of e-brake effect when you're uh, off the gas because the, the diff will lock up. That's what they call, that's what they mean when they say their diff's locking up is instead of one wheel spinning at one rate and the other one spinning at a different rate independently of each other, the uh, the diff's going to lock up and they're going to spin at the same time. So, easiest way to think about it is you increase this all the way up, or if you just increase it the uh, in your off throttle and turning into a corner, just think like you got a little mini e-brake. That's so really going to help that rear end spin around. And then when you uh, increase this and you get on the throttle, now both tires want to spin at the same rate, right? Well, the outside tire needs to spin faster than the inside tire on a corner. So if you mat it, that inside tire is going to try and go as fast as the outside tire needs to go, and it's going to break loose. So it causes a little bit more of a drift ability or a power sliding out of a corner. So you let off the gas, it creates more of an e-brake effect. Uh, you get on the gas it causes a little bit more of a power drift effect now this was all the way down to like seven i think so uh, you know bring it up quite a bit just so if i can really see if i can really notice a change so this should help me with uh rotation both uh, off throttle and on throttle. So pretty much mid corner and exit. That's where I should really know. So, well, also entry, like for here when I'm off throttle. That's one corner I probably gotta be pretty mindful of it in because of all the corners, that's the one corner that I would kinda let the car slide a little bit just to help me rotate through it. So we'll see how that goes. hardest part about early shifting in that last corner 
is when I need to do it is when I'm letting off the gas. So I got to get used to doing like a mini throttle but at the same time I'm letting off the gas so I can actually get the car to shift into the right gear. But I can definitely uh, feel the um, rear end rotate a little bit better on a corner exit now at the diffs a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Now that there's a little bit more diff in there. I feel like Baja every time I go through there. Same here. It's a fun section right there. These GT3 cars, perfect. See, keep. <laughs> I keep missing shifts going into that corner. <clears throat> I'll get it figured out eventually. Yeah, a little distraction that lap. So right now I'm just in running laps mode. I'll keep this set where it is. It's a really good baseline. At least for my driving style. What I need to work in it is you can tell I was just trying to like put the throttle there and it still wasn't shifting. That's what I need to work on. It really is a fun track. It's a nice little roller coaster ride, a lot of elevation changes. Good camber in the corners. No, the corners really feel like a chore. They're all fun to go through. Even this section, I mean, it's completely different, but once you get it down, it's really not that bad. a little bit better. Alright, so I'll do a little uh, lap review here. Make the break right after the two marker there. Just get your apex and then come in here. Kind of shallow because you can do it either way. You can let it wash out like this or you can hug that line. It's getting nice. Run out of here. Make the break of the two board here. Down to second gear, maybe a little bit before the two board. Let's make sure you get it woed down so you can get on the gas as soon as possible. And up here, I think I like to break right around the middle one and two board, or closer to the one. Or a little bit closer to the one. Get as much of that curb as you can, get that curb, or get as close as that curb as you can, but you don't want to get on that curb because you can't 
That corner's got beautiful camber, and you get on that curb, it'll unsettle the car, and they're in a long brake loose. So that section, you just gotta go for it. Actually, I think I finally found a 1X. Back down to third. Pretty much getting fourth as soon as you can right here. <laughs> Let it float out. Slowly trail breaking. Slowly coming down. Missing the apex almost. Then trying to shift up. There you go. And we're done. That is my best lap yet. Yeah. Cars behaving a lot better on exit out of that corner, even on a little bit older tires. <laughs> ah, it's so much fun. I wish everybody that didn't have like at least a CSW level wheel hat on, man. If I was a billionaire, I'd buy y'all one. So, uh, you billionaires out there playing eye racing, don't be stingy. Just mobbing, I don't care right now. <laughs> Just gonna have some fun. Oh, watch out now. Back down a little bit, bud. Aww, thought I was gonna get more air than that. I think she's done. Alright. Call it a day on the Ford. Check out the suspension at work. Hello, slow mo. Uh, I wonder how I already had damage on the right. And she's done. Alright, I guess. Uh, oh, that was, uh, you guys learned something. Garrity did save this. Doesn't hurt to save it twice. Alright, guys. Uh, Till next time.